time for a bit of refactoring and we're going to introduce presenters into our API, which will allow us to present data out in a very um, consistent format. And if we want to update that across our entire API, if we had lots of other endpoints, it would be really easy to do. We wouldn't have to come back here and say, oh, I want this to be something else and I want this to be something else or I want to add something else here. So let's look at doing that now. So inside of Shorty, we're going to create a new folder called Presenters. And inside of here, I'm going to create a new file. and I'm going to call it Base Presenter. And that's a PHP file. And we're going to namespace this, obviously, under Shorty Presenters. Makes sense. And we'll give this the class name Base Presenter. So any presenters that we create are going to extend Base Presenter in case we need any uh, functionality in here that we might want to expose to them subclasses but uh, we're only going to include one method in there for now so I'm creating a new file now and this is going to be our error presenter so it's going to specifically uh, deal with outputting errors so let's create error presenter.php let's give this a namespace shorty presenters classes error presenter and this is going to be responsible like I said for outputting errors so let's look at doing that just now so the two errors that we've got what do we actually have being returned well we have an array in here which is being JSON encoded so it can be output here and shown properly in this case it's not an error but if we were to get rid of this we see an error a URL is required so let's tackle this one first and then we can just easily reuse the functionality down here. So inside of our error presenter then, what kind of thing do we want to do? We want to be able to pass in a code and a message and we want that to spit out a nice presented error for us. So we need a constructor here because we need to create a new instance of this presenter to be able to present to the user. And we're gonna take a code and a message. So up here we have two properties, code and message. And here we're just gonna set this to there. So message like so. So now we need to look at using the to string magic method because essentially all we want to do here is we want to say uh, app response write new error presenter pass in a code pass in a message to string basically will um, return a string when you echo or output somehow your object that you've already created so we need to encode our output to a JSON string so we need to add this functionality to our base presenter and then we need to extend uh, our base presenter from our error presenter so let's extend base presenter and inside of base presenter let's create a new encode output method so all this is going to do is just return json encode anything we pass into this it might seem a bit silly but if you ever needed to update this it would be a lot easier just to come and update this one method rather than all of the presenters that you're currently using. So it might seem a little bit silly to just do the same thing here, uh, but it will make it easier in future, hopefully. So inside of our error presenter, then we have our two string magic method. Like I said, when we output this object that we're going to be instantiating, this error presenter class, uh, this will just spit us out some text. And this text is going to be a JSON string, so we're going to return this encode output, which is that method that we've just created here. And in here, we're going to pass in the same thing that we passed in here. So this basically, so let's cut this, or copy this and paste it in just here. And that's what we need to do. So the error is going to be a specific code. We pass this into this when we uh, when we eventually instantiate it. So we just say this code. We did the same with the message as well. So we just say this message like so. And that's it. And 
that is pretty much it. We can now actually update our our uh, file, our generation file here to actually use this. So we get rid of all this now, and all we need to do is say new error presenter 1000, and then we can pass in a URL is required, and that's it. I'm going to pull this down on this line just for clarity so it looks a little bit neater. So that is a massive improvement over outputting all that rubbish. Um, now we have this presenter to deal with that. But we need to import this as per anything else. So we need to say use shorty presenters error presenter like so. So let's check if this works in exactly the same way. When I don't enter a URL and I hit that, we get exactly the same response back. It's just a lot easier now. This is easier to remember. So all we need to do here is go ahead and get rid of this. Paste this in here, change the error code and say a valid URL is required. And once again, if we were to just type in a load of rubbish in here, we get the same output. So that's it for our error presenters. We now have this class that we can use output wherever we want and it will give us what we need. If we need to change this at all, the structure of this we can do, simple. So now we're gonna move on to our uh, link presenters. So anything to do with the links in our application. So we do exactly the same thing. We create a new presenter. So that's link presenter.php. And again, we namespace this under shorty presenters and we call this link presenter we extend the base presenter that we created and again we have a constructor for when we instantiate this all this is going to pass through though is a link object and we can type uh, type hint this using link and we just need to say use shorty models links the reason we do this is if we don't have a link passed through to here we know that it's not a suitable uh, value to pass into our constructor so this will throw an error within php so we need to do now is say this link equals link and create a protected property up here and now we can do exactly the same thing we can say public function and we can use our two string magic method and we really just do the same as we did with the error uh, error presenter here so we're encoding the output which is that method on our base presenter so we just say this or return rather this encode output and then in here we just pass in what we want so we can copy and paste this from here which is just this we do need to make quite a few changes to this so uh, in fact let's just grab this part of it so yeah we do need to make quite a few changes to this so payload URL is no longer an option because we are not passing the payload through to this. So we're just going to have to settle for outputting this link URL. Remember the link we pass through to here is going to be this link here. So we got all the, we've got all the information we need. So we're outputting the URL. Now we're outputting this link code. And we'll deal with the URL in just a minute. So I'm going to comment that out for now. Uh, we need to do something slightly different here uh, than saying app because app isn't available in this scope. So let's take a look at how this works. So we uh, go back to generate. We can get rid of all of that. We can use our link presenter. And we can say in here, new link presenter passing that link. So just to recap, if you're con confused, we're creating a new link presenter, which remember when we echo it out anywhere or output it anywhere, we are using the two string method to return a string. Encode output is returning a string because it's taking an array and it is JSON encoding it, which takes an array or an object and outputs it to a string. And then we're grabbing, because we passed in the link, we're grabbing the link URL and the link code. So we now should see if we generate a genuine URL, 
So let's say google.com, I don't think we've got. If I just click that. Uh, oh, so we've got a syntax error in generate on line 32. Let's just check this out. Ah, there we go. So we don't obviously need that trailing semicolon. And the reason this has happened is because google.com now already exists because we just saw that error. So let's get rid of both of these. And let's just generate this again. Oh, of course. So we're this at this point, we're looking at if the link already does exist. So let me send that through once more. And uh, we get a server error. So let's check this out. Um, okay, so that must be Okay, so this is an interesting error. Um, good for debugging and learning about why this has happened. So argument one pass to link presenters construct method must be an instance of shorty presenters link. Now that's wrong, because we want it to be an instance of shorty uh, models link. And all that means is that within the link presenter, uh, I misimported, I didn't import this link object properly, I wrote links, which you probably noticed. So if I return that to link, uh, when I hit this, it should work. So let's go back to JSON text view. And here we see the presenter in action giving us that response back, but without the URL. So let's deal with the problem of the URL now, because again, app isn't in the scope of this class. So we need to do something slightly differently. And all we need to do here is say slim get instance and then access the config method. All this will do is it will turn the current instance of your application. So we actually need to go ahead and import slim now because obviously this doesn't exist under our presenter's namespace. So let's say use slim, slim. And now we should update this here to this link code. So remember we're just appending our base URL and then a forward slash, then the code. And this should all work properly now. So let's uh, click that again. And there we go. So we get the URL back as expected. So all that's left to do now is uh, just update this response here by getting rid of all of that duplicated code, pasting that in there, changing this to new link. And let's start all over again. Why not? So let's get rid of both of these. And let's go back to our API, uh, our REST client. Let's send through google.com. It's created a new record. There it is. When we send this again, we're returning the same record. So we're not creating a duplicate and uh, so on and so forth. So we can play around with this all day. So um, although we'd already created our generate endpoint, it's good to tidy things up using things like presenters. So we can just easily reuse this functionality elsewhere in our app or just within the same file here. You can see it's tidied it up a little bit more. So that's it. We've uh, managed to generate URLs via an API endpoint using our REST client to send that data through.